Hey guys, Meet Rebel Chris Tomer here with this Monday afternoon evening mountain weather update to the big picture radar across the west. There's our storm system that is slowly moving down through the inner mountain. We've seen snow today over the Wasatch, seeing snow over the Tetons. You can see some snow moving through Montana, parts of northern and northeastern Wyoming. Now, the energy is going to be sliding down into Colorado tonight into tomorrow morning. Couple of live cameras, Jackson Hole, you've got snow coming down right now. And that is just great to see the snow all the way down to the valley floor here. That's what we've been needing for a long time. So snow there. It did snow earlier up at Alton. You may still have another batch of like an inch to come through overnight into tomorrow morning. But the view up there right now after a few inches of new snow looking good. Radar out of Wyoming. That's what it looks like. You can see a little bit of blue still over the top of the Tetons. And let me take you down in the Salt Lake. That's what's left in Salt Lake. Not a lot. But again, there's still a little bit of energy that will come through overnight into tomorrow morning. All right, water vapor this afternoon. This evening looks like this. So oranges and reds are drier air aloft. Your moisture is in your whites and your blues. And basically, you can see the spin right here with this area of low pressure. That will cruise down through the rest of uh, Wyoming and uh, Colorado and then out of Utah overnight tonight into tomorrow morning and then move away. Then it's all about this atmospheric river setup. So... You see all this energy sitting over the Pacific. There's a big, big area of low pressure that's going to steer traffic sitting in the Gulf of Alaska. This, all this, and there's even an area of low pressure and some energy over here. This whole thing will turn into a big trough, and that will direct the jet into the West Coast. And that's what's going to set up this heavy, this heavy precip event. Uh, a, a moderate intensity atmospheric river set up from the 20th through the 23rd from the Sierra all the way up through the high, vo the high volcanoes and the Cascades. So that is what's on tap. All these two lows will actually get together and rotate through this trough and keep the, uh, the precip going. And there will be benefits through the interior as well. In fact, here's the latest integrated vapor transport for that San Francisco area all the way up through the Sierra. And again, moderate intensity atmospheric river right on the doorstep of being a strong, a low level strong event. So this is going to have quite a push of moisture up against the terrain features. All right, here's my latest uh, snow forecast timeline. Best odds of snow for the Wasatch, Tetons, Colorado, Tahoe, and Interior BC. A couple of small changes here. Um, let's just look at Tahoe. So heavy snow coming in on the 20th, heavy snow accumulation. Then you've got heavy accumulation on 22, 23, and heavy again, 24, 25. So three impulses, two to three different storm systems, bringing all this heavy snow to the, uh, the Sierra, um, all the way up through the volcanoes and the high cascades. Now, through the interior, we're going to see some decent snow. Well, let's look at Colorado. Tonight through tomorrow, light to moderate accumulations as this initial low moves through. Then 24, afternoon 24, 25, 26, heavy snow accumulations. So whatever happens on the West Coast, some of that gets blown into the interior, gets carried into Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, Utah, and Colorado down the line. Now, let's do an update in Colorado. Since we've got snow coming tonight, tomorrow morning for Vail Pass, I showed you Vail Pass's forecast this morning, and it's very similar um, this afternoon with about four to four and a half inches of snow coming. So anywhere from two to four, two to five across the central and northern mountains of Colorado. So from Vail Pass all the way back towards Aspen and Snowmass up into Summit County, I-70 corridor, uh, Front Range High Peaks, Loveland, A Basin, Winter Park, anywhere in that kind of that two to four, two to five inch range, I think we'll do it. All right, here's the latest forecast radar and satellite. So by 5.30 this afternoon, that's your setup. Snow is in blue. Now, by tomorrow morning, there's your snow sliding through a lot of the, uh, the mountains of Colorado. And also the southern mountains will see accumulation out of this. I don't want to leave the, the southern mountains out. Um, still some residual snow on the backside through a lot of the Tetons and a couple of flurries there. Again, a little bit, maybe another inch through the, uh, the Wasatch kind of sliding through tonight and tomorrow morning. And then that's out of here. And then it's all about what's happening across the West Coast. Look at the size of that storm system. Late 1119, boom, into 1120 just nails the coast. Basically, it starts north of Tahoe, and it's right over the top. That fire hose of moisture is right over the top of Shasta, um, Oregon, Washington State, and a lot of BC. And the blow-off 
looks good for parts of Idaho and northwest Montana and a lot of that interior part of BC. Here we are Wednesday afternoon. It does start to shift down. It's kind of in and out of Tahoe at times. Doesn't quite make it to Mammoth this early, though. You're out of it initially. All right, so there's Thursday afternoon. There's Friday. Next storm system moves in on Friday with another surge of heavy moisture for the coast all the way up into B.C. Um, and then by the time we get into Saturday, um, that storm system's rolling out of California and across the northern tier. By the time we get into the 24th in the afternoon, the next storm system moves into California. So three different storm systems. This one's got a lot with it. This one's got snow all the way from Tahoe down to Mammoth. And look at the line of snow that lines up all the way through Nevada into parts of Utah, Wyoming, and eventually into Colorado by the 25th and all the way through the 26th. It just keeps snowing. And then another little front right there tries to come in from the northern tier. So this is a very active pattern. Here are my latest numbers. So rest of today through tomorrow, 2 to 5 in Colorado. There might be a 6-inch amount. But that's coming overnight into tomorrow morning. Uh, maybe another inch in the Wasatch, another one to two up there in parts of the Tetons. And then you're already starting to feel the effects up there, the next storm system along uh, Washington State and the Oregon coast down to Shasta with anywhere from four to eight inches. Now here's the big time period. The heart of the uh, atmospheric river surge is the 20th through the 23rd for the Sierra, Oregon, Washington, B.C. And again, there's going to be blow off even past this point with additional storm systems for the interior through the 27th. But looking at uh, about a foot and a half for Mammoth, potentially two to three feet for Tahoe and quite a bit more up around Shasta. Looking at one to three feet up, and up along Washington, Oregon, volcanoes, cascades. Um, generally one to two feet up through B.C. And in the interior parts of B.C., looking at probably 8 to 12. Good snow for a lot of Idaho. Anywhere in purple on this map is a foot or more. In Colorado, especially along the western slope, with that flow directed right into that area, um, late in the period, we could see a foot, maybe 8 to 14. That would probably cover most places. But that could be a pretty good snow for parts of the western slope of Colorado. So that is going to be a very good period. And it really all depends on, you know, how and where this atmospheric river, where exactly does the big moisture come in? Is it right at Mount Shasta? Is it a little bit south of there? Is it a little bit north of there? We're going to have to wait and see, but we're getting close. 1120 through 1123 appears to be when the bulk of this hits. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Take care and have a great night.